it's going to be loud, right? There's a lot of different calls out there. Right? That's loud. I'm not interested in what, whether it sounds like it's heard, I just want to be heard. I'll do whatever I need to do to get their attention. Sometimes that's faster stuff. Sometimes it's long stretched out notes. Exaggerated, right? Not, ex not particularly goosey or musical, right? But loud. So I can be heard. Right? They're waving the flag. Um, the birds turn my way, you know, and head in our direction. I want to become somewhat goose like. I'd like to sound like two geese. Maybe a lower pitch bird and a higher pitch bird, right? So if you can honk, you can call geese. If you can honk in two pitches, okay, or if you can vary your notes a little bit, you can call geese. Everything a Canada goose does is a honk or a part of a honk. So if you hear people doing fancy schmancy stuff, remember when you're practicing with your call, that it's just a honk or a part of a honk. Meaning, you know, that stretched out note's just a long honk, right? A honk is, okay? Now they can honk a bunch of different ways. They can honk, honk in a raspy way. They can honk in a clear way, right? They can honk, you can get it really raspy with your voice. Okay, so there's a lot of different ways you can honk just by changing the way you're putting air through the call. But if you can make that basic call, or you can do a bunch of different things. People say, well, how do you learn how to just moan? You know, it's not that long drawn out thing, but it's just a moan. Well, moan, for the most part, is the bottom half of the hall. You'll hear people do it, and they mix it into different to their repertoire. It's in there, right? But it's basically, it's just a honk. It's just the beginning of a honk. And, you know, it's, there's not as much to it as it sounds like when you break it down and slow it down. So, uh, there are times, and I, I mentioned it earlier, that those birds are getting close and I don't want to be loud. Like last year was really warm at home and the birds were just never really in a pattern that they were easy for us to deal with or that they were even tolerable for us. It was a tough season all year. And there were a lot of times when no call was the better choice or a very quiet thing was, was a better choice. So there were times when I just put the call to, to just, I'm letting the decoys do the work and I'm just making a sound. That, you know, I mean, if it comes out of a call that's made to do, you know, geese or ducks, it's probably going to sound something like something they do, right? So even that little is something that you would hear if you sat inside that flock. But uh, again, so not everything, you know, has to be loud, but so, so, you know, the moan, that's just part of a honk, right? It's just one that you haven't broken over, right? So back when, when we had the little old records, the 45, there were these things called record players where you put a needle down and then went to read about them in history on your laptop, probably. They don't have the textbooks at school where my kids go anymore. So. They have textbooks? Really? Yeah, we're, we're changing schools. But um, we used to, you know, they would say on the old record, the voice of the Canada Goose goes her own. And they would say, don't let your call, don't don't let the note trail off or something like that, or trail on. So don't go like this. And of course, all of the generations learned that way. You know, several generations learn that way. Well, for me, when people talk, ask me questions about how do you build patterns and how do you develop speed, you have to do that to develop patterns and speed. You have to let your notes roll on in order to let the next note run. So, if you had to start and stop each note, you know, start and stop there, why don't you just go, Point being, not very 
very goosey, but... <laughs> if you slur and let things develop, you can get a lot more notes out. So back to the scenario. We're trying to sound like a couple birds, right? <laughs> now, just by varying when you make the notes, you can take those two notes and the beginning of one of them and do pretty much what I do on almost every flock inside of 800 yards. Okay, not that I can tell you exactly when they cross that 800 yard mark, but it sounds like a good number. You can go, then you can go, I'm just doing the same, using the same sounds, right? So, you get the birds turned your way, they're coming your way, you can do it fast, you can do it slow, you can do it however, whatever it takes to keep them paying attention. <laughs> you don't have to do a lot more than that. You don't even have to do that much. Okay? But if you have the two notes, you have two weapons, and the more notes that you can learn to do, the more tools you have in your tackle box, or whatever, <laughs> tools in the toolbox, whatever you want to call it. Okay? So, if you approach calling as a fun thing that might actually help your hunting situation, you can really kind of develop it into something that you, you may stumble into having a lot of fun with it and having, having more birds come in, right? So, you can go on and on and on and on and do a bunch of different things, but everybody in this room hears a flock of geese differently. Each person hears it differently from the person next to them. You know, some of us might pick up the higher register and concentrate more on that. It's kind of like when you go and listen to a choir. You know, we'd all walk out and someone would say, man, did you hear those sopranos? Oh, wow, that baritone's really bringing it today. You know, you just, you catch something different. Some, sometimes you, you think you hear patterns or rhythms or cadences more than you hear tones, right? And the best suggestion I can think of if, you know, to, to help people become better callers is, you know, listen to what, you know, when you hear it, if it grabs you, go with that. You know, I've got my best buddy, well, one of my best hunting buddies, Mike Bradway, you know, just loves single hawks. And when you listen to a flock of geese, you know, Jerry and you know, my buddy Jerry and I would pick up on all these little clucks and high pitched things and multiple things that up, up, you can tell one goose is doing it. And we go, do you hear that? Do you hear that? And you know, Mike would be saying, you know, concentrating on the single low pitched honks that he hears from the flock. And that's what he would point out to us. Well, don't you know, when Mike goes to the field and hunts, his calling style is pretty much single low pitched honks. So, you know, you go hunting with Mike and say, there they are, buddy. Ah. No honk. Ah. And you say, okay, you know, pick up the speed. Ah. We'll do about the same thing. We'll do the same thing <laughs> all the way to it. But that's what get. That's what he likes, you know. And so my point there is, you know, you, you got try to try to imitate what grabs you. I mean, that's really what it is. And if if the sounds of the birds don't grab you, then don't bother. But but go with what what you like to hear, you know, because it's, because that's what you're going to get the best at. You're going to get the best at that quicker than trying to become. You know, try to do something by some textbook. Does that make sense at all? Uh, you know, I tend to ramble, but hopefully that makes some sense.